Hello everyone, my name is Kaylee and welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I would showcase three different Great Lee teams, all brand new, not shown on my channel before. But what makes these three different is they are really gentle on your Stardust Bank. So each team features two Pokemon where it costs 10,000 Stardust to unlock their third move and one Pokemon where it costs 50,000. So no 75 and no 100,000 Stardust Pokemon up in here. If you're anything like me and are constantly short on Stardust, having some teams available to you where you know it's not going to cost you very much to build the Pokemon involved can be really handy. So without any further ado, let's launch into the battles. Let's crack on with the battles. So this first team features a Venusaur lead. My thinking here was it would mop up any water type and rock type leads left over from the Talonflame influx. And there we go, we get an Azu lead straight off the bat. Now they come in with a Stunfisk. I farm up a decent amount and I want to take at least one rock slide before I come in with Marowak. I want that Frenzy Plant ready on Venusaur for when I inevitably face Azu with him later and then I come in with Marowak. Now I'm going to shield one of these rock slides. I shield this one now so they're forced to keep throwing, there's no way they can farm down from here. And I throw a Bone Club of my own. Now Bone Club is not going to be doing anything like the damage their rock slides will be doing to me, even though both are hitting for super effective. And they come in with another rock slide. I take this one because I don't want this Marowak at full health when that Azu comes back in, giving the Azu way too much farm. Now what I should have done here is probably attempted to farm all the way down, because there is still a decent amount of health on that Marowak, which is going to be given all to the Azu. The Azu doesn't need to shield anything, it doesn't need to worry about incoming moves, it can just go to town, farming the turnips as we say. I managed to get to a Bone Club, but as you can see this is barely going to do any damage, so I definitely would have been better off if I'd have just farmed all the way down on that Stunfisk, had a Shadow Ball to throw and given the Azu less farm. But we live and we learn. So I pop in with the Leaf Boy himself and of course, I have that Frenzy Plant ready that I farmed up earlier. But because I made that mistake, the Azu also has quite a lot of energy from farming down the Marowak. And unfortunately, we see they've got Ice Beam. If they'd have thrown something other than Ice Beam there, I would have felt fairly safe that I could go straight with this Venusaur Azu matchup and not worry. But Ice Beam is only five bubbles to get to, and now I've got no shields. But, as you can see, I switch in Wigglytuff to catch that Ice Beam because I know it'll be coming after the fifth bubble. And what have they got in the back? A Surfetched. Beautiful. So I charm it down almost into Oblivion before they can get to a Leaf Blade. This will probably KO from here. But then I can come with the Venusaur, get a little bit of extra farm, and now I'm already halfway to a Frenzy Plant. The Azu's energy dry. I can now throw the Frenzy, I knew I was going to get there because the Azu had just thrown that Ice Beam. And that KOs the Azu. Yeah. Taking the first game, despite making a bit of a mistake there with the Marowak. Alrighty, let's move on to game number two. Game number two, where are you? We're still celebrating our win, apparently. Eventually we'll, yay, we've got to game number two. Versus Sukimon, I think that said. Okay, we've got a Swamp on a Stunfisk. This is another really nice lead. We definitely like to see this. I imagine that Stunfisk is not going to be hanging around for very long. Nope, in comes the Azu. Now, I included this game because I did something odd with my switching here. I know you're thinking, Kaylee, you've got Meganium. What are you thinking? Swap in the Grass type, woman. Yes, of course, normally you would swap in a Grass type to an Azu. But that Meganium has great play against the Stunfisk. Whereas that Nine Tails, absolutely no play at all. The Nine Tails can beat the Azu, so I may as well use the Nine Tails here because this way the Nine Tails is guaranteed to be in a winning matchup, and if the Meganium is against the Stunfisk, guaranteed win. If I swap in the Meganium here, the Meganium gets a guaranteed win, but if the Nine Tails is against the Stunfisk, that is a guaranteed loss. So I'm I'm basically using my opponent's team and what I know they have. To dictate the way I do my switches. So that Azu has decided to double shield the Ninetales, which is really interesting. 
This is probably a hydro pump, but I just decide to let it go in this occasion because if I do take out the Azu, the Stunfisk is just going to come back in. So there's not really much point preserving that health on the Icy Boy. You can tell that I totally forgot the name of Ninetales for a second. But anyway, we've swapped in our Swamp of Boy. We have farmed all the way down on the Azu. So now we have a Sludge Bomb ready to throw at the Pelipper. They have no shields, so this will hit. Fantastic, about two thirds of its health gone. Now, if we can just Okay, there we go. I was thinking I was going to throw as soon as I had it, but actually I was a bit smarter than that and I didn't. I farmed all the way up first. Now this weather ball will hit for neutral and it will chunk a decent amount away. There we go. But we don't need to worry about that because we know what's in the back and we know Meganium can definitely beat it. So now I have one Hydro to throw at the Pelipper. This takes it out and now the Stunfisk comes in. We're almost at our second Hydro. We can throw this one as well. Now, as soon as I throw this Hydro, I'm going to be switching in the Meganium. This is to deny that Stunfisk at the farm on the rest of the Swampert. So in we go with the Meganium. One Frenzy Plant, of course, is going to do the job, but the opponent knows there's no way out of this situation and decides to surrender the match. Let's see, are we going to celebrate this win for a gratuitous amount of time on screen, or are we going to go straight to game three? Oh, here we go, yeah, this is why I included this clip. That team I did get a 5-0 with, so I wanted to show the end of that there. I will be doing a full video for that team in the future. So team number three gets an absolutely horrendous lead, fire type on the snowman. So I decide to swap in my Swampert and they counter with Venusaur. So this is hard counter city, it is looking bad. I decide to throw the sludge bomb just in case it hits sludge wave sorry but sadly it doesn't i don't need to worry though because i can definitely get off another hydro cannon because that venusaur is farming me all the way down if they'd have thrown the move that would have been so much better but they've been really smart they know they don't need to throw they can safely farm me all the way down and then have a ton of energy for my next pokemon now i'm going to bring altaria in because it resists grass because of the dragon typing and the sludge bombs aren't going to do that much. I think it's around a quarter, maybe a tad more for the Altaria. They've definitely got two sludge bombs stored. Yeah, it's about a quarter. And here comes the second sludge bomb. We shield nothing at this point. I know I can take them on the Altaria. We don't need to be shielding. And if by any chance they frenzy plant baited, it would suck to lose a shield to that. Now we can farm all the way down and take the Venusaur out. We have a decent amount of energy now on the Altaria. We can throw this sky attack. This will either do a good chunk of the Marowak's health or it is going to get the last shield and they decide to shield that Marowak. Now sadly, Altaria is not fast to get to his charge moves. I choose not to shield this because I have a feeling it's Bone Club. And it is. <laughs> the, the damage that does is absolutely minimal. But sadly, I don't think I can take the second Bone Club because my health is so low. So at this point, I do definitely have to shield the Bone Club. So we shield up this Bone Club and we throw the Sky Attack. This will take the Marowak down really low into its health. Now, I don't want the Marowak to get any farm off my Altaria, so I'm immediately swapping in my Snowman. Opponent has the same idea, and in comes Charizard. So this poor Snowman, a Bomber Snow, is fighting a double fire team. But this isn't over because Charizard's half flying, so Ice hits for neutral. Weather Ball, as you can see, does about half Charizard's health. Greatly Charizard is squish. And I have a shield left. If they go straight Blast Burn here and I shield this, then I can definitely get to another move. Oh, they go Dragon Claw. Okay, it's going to be tight. But I get there. Thank you, whoever's in charge of PvP up there. Thank you. <laughs> we managed to get to another Weather Ball and this will KO the Charizard. I managed to get, I think, two moves off on the Marowak, and now it is a fast move race. This looks impossible, but it's not. Yes, Altaria! I hope you all enjoyed the video, and thank you so much for watching. And a huge thank you to those of you who've decided to become patrons. You guys are the best. You rock. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like, as it really helps. Drop a comment down below letting me know what you thought of these teams. Which is your favourite budget Pokemon? 
I think for me it's probably Venusaur. I have a serious attachment to the Lettuce Boy. If you would like to see two PvP videos per week as a minimum, then subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. I think that's everything. Oh yeah, Fight Club! <laughs>